Uh, welcome if you've just joined us. Now, you might have noticed we've got a different soundtrack at the moment. This is the smash hit, Come On, Feel the Noise by Slade, of course. And I'm delighted to say that Susan, uh, Jeff and I are now joined by the band's frontman, rock legend, Noddy Holder. Or as we know him on this show, Susan Holder's <laughs> husband. Yes! <laughs> uh, now, the country was shocked last week when Susan revealed Noddy's cancer battle. If you've experienced cancer or you want to wish Noddy well, get in touch. 0207 862 is the number that you need. Uh, Noddy, yep. you're looking fantastic. Thank you so much Thank for coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Beautiful song, that beautifully sung. Beautifully <laughs> sung. It sort of gets you off your seat immediately, yes. doesn't it? It's a bit shocky having it that loud. <laughs> <laughs> Now, listen, um, let's talk about what happened. Five years ago, yep. you sat in a room with a doctor. Yep. And he told you what? He told me I'd got six months to live. I'd got uh, cancer of the esophagus, which at the time I thought was a rare disease. Uh, but I've found out since, obviously, with the treatments I've gone through, that it's not, it's not uncommon at all, particularly in men. It's very common. Uh, but when you get the diagnosis and then they tell you six months at the outside, with me, I, I'm very to be a positive outlook on life every day of the year. I always have had. And I was more worried for my family how they were going to react than I was for myself, really. Um, but they gave me... I went to the... Eventually to the Christie Hospital in Manchester and uh, they said... I said, well, is it six months? Is that it? Is that the end of the line? And they said, well, the only option you've got is an experimental treatment that we've never, ever tried before. We've had some success over the past 12 months with it, uh, but we've never tried it on anyone over 60 because we don't think uh, anyone over 60 would be able to count, uh, you know, uh, make it work because it was very, very hard going. He said, but your positive outlook in your mind could help you and are you willing to take the trial on and the experimental medical thing? And I says, well, what choice have I got, really? Mm. It's six months or I try it. And I tried it. It was hard going, very hard going. Uh, but five years later, I'm still standing. So uh, and, I and made looking, the right great, decision. Great as ever. Um, tell me about the difficulty of receiving that kind of news six months what went through your head how did you both discuss he, it he did exactly that i mean it was incredible to watch he just kind of went i've had a good life i can't ask for any more i, I did he did he did <laughs> no he did. one can argue with and that. The, yeah and and, and I, I i did not take it that well i i i found out the definition of climbing the walls. I found there was one moment where I was trying to get out of the room vertically. It was, it was unbelievable. It she was did very... fall apart. I did fall apart. I, did, I, I got out of the room to fall apart, but unfortunately, you, you knew that's what was happening. I pulled myself together as quickly as possible and I've been with him to every single appointment he's ever had. And, you know, obviously, you know, we, we, we've gone through all of that together. But at that moment, what do you do with somebody who's telling you that? What they offered him was a form of... I mean, you've made it sound like an experimental weird thing. It's chemotherapy was what he had uh, and he was the oldest person, we think, to have, to have had that. Um, but at the point, we went through weeks and weeks of being... of just... Anyone will know who's been through that kind of cancer diagnosis at that point. There's lots of moments in rooms, small windowless rooms with people just shaking their heads going, I'm really sorry, but there's nothing. And that's what we were told. So for him now to be here five years later is incredible. It's not where we kind of thought we were going to be, but it's brilliant. Definitely not. Um, we, you know, we didn't, we didn't know. We had no um, choice, really. Well, I didn't have any choice but to try it. Well, because there was, a, there was a moment he d you did say... I did, I did. ..frightened me wobbled, to death, yeah. he, he, where he said, if I've only got six months, I don't want to be ill, so I'll just see it out. But then they did talk to him a bit more about what... We, we, and he just was, OK, I'll give it a go. And thank goodness he did, because obviously the chemotherapy did... It's a targeted theme of chemotherapy now. They are able to do that much more. Every single person reacts differently and they, they alter chemotherapy for every single person. Yeah. And obviously he had a, a great response. Now... You kept it a secret, Noddy. Yep. And you've decided to speak about it now. Yep. Tell us what was behind that decision. Uh, I wanted to keep it quiet because while I was going through the treatment and getting fit again after the treatment, because your resistance is low, really low after the treatment, and I didn't want 
getting calls from the media every five minutes and things like that, or people I hadn't seen for 25 years. I didn't want the attention. I wanted to deal with it in my own way. The reason... And we didn't want to worry people. In fact, no, yeah. it, telling people is a horrible part of it. It's like you have to relive it all the time. We're finding this quite difficult. Talk, we haven't talked about it publicly. We don't no, intend never, yeah. to talk about it, you know, ad infinitum. But we do want to kind of, you know, tell people what we've well, been... Well, I want to raise the profile right. of cancer of the esophagus now. Uh, many people haven't even heard of it. As I said before, it is quite common, particularly amongst men.